Alex Sideropoulos here with Maroons Women's Head Basketball Coach Aaron Roussel. Coach Roussel, it's not that different any week <laughs> now. Two wins, first against Carnegie, then against Case on Sunday, but going to Friday's game against Carnegie, only five minutes into the game, your guys had a, a double-digit lead. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, you know, I, I really thought our girls were, were really locked in when the game started. I mean, I, I, felt, I felt, um, you know, as a coach, you always try to worry about all the different things that, that could cause you to lose a game. And, um, you, you know, I thought we played really well against Carnegie the first time at their place. And, you know, I think that game kind of got away from them a little bit. And I was a little worried of, hey, our, hopefully our kids don't think that was easy. I think we just played really well and they didn't play their best. And I was a little, I wouldn't even say worried, but you think about how our kids going to have a little bit of a letdown going into it. And, and even in the locker room before the game, I really felt like our kids were focused, they were ready, um, and really locked in. And I thought that that showed in those first few minutes. Now, Sunday's game against Case, that one was probably one that you were probably a little bit more worried about, would you say, given that last time at Case in Ohio, you had an eight-point deficit at halftime? Yeah, and I think, you know, they do a really nice job, and they've always been a tough matchup for us over the years. I mean, I, I can, you know, Aaron Hollinger's been a great player for them. Um, and, you know, and in some ways, sad to see her go, and a lot of other ways, very happy to see her go and, and finally graduate. But she's given us a lot of problems over the years, and I think Jen's done a really nice job of, uh, of kind of bothering us and taking us out of her comfort zone. And I thought that they did that in the first half on Sunday. Can you talk to me a little bit about the pace of the game? I know it was... Double-digit uh, turnovers for both teams, and then it was 23-18 at halftime. Of course, the Maroons were up. Right. I, I think we've all done our apologizing for anybody that had to watch that first half, and I think Case probably would have said the same thing. I think it was, you know, sloppy play uh, from both teams. Um, you know, I, I, you, you never want to make excuses, but, you know, sometimes those Sunday UAA games fall into that trap. It just doesn't look very pretty. And um, I was really proud of our kids, how we really bounced back in, in the second half. I thought we kind of collected ourselves at halftime, you know, made, made a few adjustments, but really I thought our kids kind of came out with a with a different approach and maybe a little bit better um, better focus and can you tell me a little bit about that different approach that they came with the second half because you know I, I, I think a points. lot of it had to do with you know you talked about the style of play but I think it was just a lot of it was the pace of play and I don't think our kids were tired I think both teams just kind of got in a little bit of a, uh, a slugfest but it just it, it was a little bit slow I, I thought from from both games so we really tried to do some things to kind of change the pace of the game and um, like I said I think it was a little bit more mental on the, on the focus and with our kids of just getting to spots and, and and kind of executing what we were normally doing and, and you know I thought we got some stuff in transition in the second half but I thought we just did a better much better job of executing even our half court stuff given that you're playing NYU Friday Brandeis Sunday the East Coast trip which I heard many people like a lot do you think that the prospects of having a perfect season now are just getting that much better? Uh, you, you know, to be honest with you, I know this sounds like a cop out, but it's not something we've talked about. You know, I don't think a whole lot of people are even spending a whole lot of time thinking about it. I mean, I, you know, you just said that right there, and I, it was like, you know, we just, it hasn't really been, uh, you know, in, in my mind at all. And really, the only thing I'm focused on right now is, is getting that, that next game. I think it's been our, our approach all season. So you just got to focus on that next game, where that means we dropped two this past weekend or we won two this past weekend. Nothing would have changed. We wanted to, to make sure we were ready for NYU on Friday. And, um, you know, we've got 48 hours to do that. And I, I'm pretty confident our kids will be in the right state of mind on, on Friday. And given that you're looking at Friday's game right now, then instead of looking at the perfect season, can you tell me what the team learned from the last game here at the Ratner Center against NYU? Yeah, it was beach night, so that was a lot of fun. I think our kids had a lot of energy, and, and I thought we did a really nice job on the boards last game. I thought that was a big difference, you know, and I thought we you know, we, we shot the ball okay, but, um, you know, I think we had some, I didn't say downfalls, but, you know, I think we did some things defensively that I think we would have liked, liked to have back, especially in that first half. So we'll focus a little bit about cleaning up our defense. I think our defense has been really good here over the last few weeks, and, um, you know, hopefully we, we kind of shut them down a little bit better than we did last time and, and hopefully still hit some shots. And finally, what are you looking for, again, adjustment-wise, or what do you want your team to do the same against Brandeis? Um, you know, I think Brandeis is another one that, that they can they can take you out of your comfort zone and um, kind of slow a game down. And we want to make sure that we're playing in our style, in our style, and, and at our pace. And I think if we do that, then then hopefully we can we can be in good shape again this weekend. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No. Looking forward to it. I, I guess the last thing I would add is, um, you know, I think we're only about a week and a half left here with our with our raffle. So if, if anybody's interested in buying tickets, give me a call or send me an email, um, and hopefully we can still get those those last hundred dollar tickets. The, the drawing will be next uh, next Saturday at halftime of the Wash U game. So um, our kids are really looking forward to the trip to uh, to Ireland this this uh, I guess this September, um, and 
hopefully we can keep uh, keep raising money and keep working hard to, to make that a reality. And can you give us a little bit of more information, background information on the raffle itself? Yeah, we uh, each of our kids is selling about a dozen raffle tickets. Um, you know, about a, for a hundred a hundred dollar raffle tickets for for the drawing, and uh, it'll be a three thousand uh, dollar drawing um, for, for the grand prize. And uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully everybody can get excited about that and a little bit of a lottery system. And uh, hopefully it'll be a fun atmosphere on that uh, at that game. And for that lucky person, it'll be a really fun atmosphere uh, next Saturday at home. All right. And everyone, buy your raffle tickets <laughs> and cheer on the Maroons as they play NYU on Friday at 5 p.m. All right. Thanks, Alex. Thank you.